Today on the channel from the AEW Unrivaled Series 7 collection by Jazzwares, we've got Matt Jackson, we've got Nick Jackson, we've got the Young Bucks. Welcome everyone, Kyle here, and welcome back to the channel as we continue our unboxing of AEW Unrivaled Series 7 via Jazzwares, and today we've got Nick, we've got Matt, the Jackson Brothers, the Young Bucks, and we're going to do these reviews like we do all the other reviews on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging, we're going to talk about it, we're going to unbox it, we're going to talk about it, we'll see where it goes from there. So the Young Bucks, of course, no strangers to the Unrivaled line at this point, uh, really four different sets of these figures when you count the repaints in there. So uh, we're going to get these guys at a pretty regular clip. I hope this is the last set of Young Bucks for at least three or four more series. Let's give it a little bit of time. Uh, but they just keep trying to get them a little bit more right. Uh, the first ones with the paint issues and stuff were pretty bad. They did improve a little bit with the paint corrections in 1B. Uh, then we got Series 3, and we'll compare these to Series 3 at the end of the video here. That one seemed to get a little bit better, and now we're to these. So we're going to compare them, see what we think, and we're going to do these unboxings like we do all the other unboxings on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We'll see where it goes from there. So let's start it off. We're going to start with old Nick Jackson. Let's look at the packaging first. There's old Nick looking only like he can look. Once again, we got Polly Pocket style coats going on. I want soft goods. You guys know me. Let's get some soft good coats going. These are a little too hard to get on and off. Uh, they really do limit the articulation. I do think if you're going to have these kind of coats, let's make a cut in the elbow. Let's be able to articulate these guys a little bit. That's what we need. Uh, or put it in a different position instead of just straight down. It just always looks strange to me. Uh, but then you got the glamour shot, of course. AEW Unrivaled, AEW Logo, Classic Superstars Inspired Packaging. Uh, number 57 is old Nick Jackson in the AEW line so far. And he's, of course, part of Series 7. All Elite Wrestling on the side over there. UPC stuff nobody cares about. And then you got the back. There he is, giving the old flex. We got the cross cell. We got the AEW logos. Let's see, what does this represent? Full gear, 11-7-2020, Jacksonville, Florida. So just almost a couple of weeks shy of one year ago on this figure. So Nick Jackson got his autograph on there as well. A lot going on. Now, I did mention in one of the other reviews, I can see you up here. Uh, it's like the glue from the factory was a little shoddy. So you got a, a little bit of rips in the paper and the cardboard, and it just doesn't look good. So that's a factory error out there on these. So I don't know if uh, I'm the only one that got these or if this is a common thing with Series 7. But it is unfortunate for you men on card guys. This wouldn't uh, cut the mustard, as they say out there. But let's get him out of the plastic prison. Let's get him out of the package. See what's going on. Always a little challenging getting these guys out. But I got him, of course. See you later. Whoa, off the top. I'm not a rookie. I'm not a rookie. Heavy. He's got some weight to it. It's those jackets. Got some weight going on there. Uh, there he is in the old plastic prison. Very L.A. Laker inspired gear here. That's at least how I see it. Whenever I see purple and yellow, uh, I always think of the Lakers as I drop him. Uh, but you guys know me. I'm a Celtics guy. I'm an A's guy. So I got to have green. I got to get green on my uniforms. Uh, but this is okay. I don't know. Let's see. Let's pull him out. See you later. Off to the side. And then we got plastic everywhere. Of course we do. We got to have these guys all plasticed up. That's the way it goes. Uh, you got YB on the back there, Young Bucks. Polly Pocket style jacket with the flare going on like a young macho man. Uh, but you know what I said. I'm not a huge Polly Pocket fan. I always prefer soft goods the majority of the time. I'd say 98%. Let's put a figure to it. 98% of the time I like the soft goods. I just hate the lack of articulation. They're just stuck in this pose. It is what it is. And I want a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of uh, more movement out of my figures, even if they are going to be like statues on a shelf. Uh, you guys know what I mean. Once again, no extra accessories. No tag title belts with this one. No extra hands. No fists. I, I don't understand it. I'm, I'm kind of drawing a blank as why we wouldn't get any fists with any of these AEW figures. Uh, it is a huge, huge miss in my book, and I'd love an answer. Somebody get me an answer. I don't know. But besides that, it's the leather jacket, got the splatter on it. Good colorings to this one. You got Bucks on the side, uh, YB on the other side here. Uh, double jointed knees, I'm sure double jointed elbows as well when we get into it. He's got the flare. This is all molded in the bottom here in the uh, all molded into the boot. So that is kind of cool. Usually, you know, we've seen in the past where we get the flare, kind of the soft goods flare going on. But let's see, let's see if I can get him out. Let's see if I can get him out of this uh, jacket. And of course, the arms are all uh, garbage bagged up. 
Gosh, this is... These poly pockets are so hard to get out, though. I guess I got to take the hands off, too, and make it a little bit easier. See how he looks. If I can get it off. Man, they just... They just don't come off very easily. It's just these... Oh, there it is. There we go. You get one arm out, and then you're home free. But, man, that's a lot of work. And I would hate it. If I was a kid playing with these, I would just hate having to take these on and off. Uh, I would They'd be off all the time. Get those arms off. Let's get these hands back in. Make him look like a normal person once again. And there you go. All right. So we got it. Gosh, he's got the soft on around the waist as well. Pull that out. Maybe. Well, there's a lot of undressing with these figures. It just seems like a lot more work than it needs to be. But they want to protect the skin tone, the uh, plastic. They don't want it, you know, getting stained, all that. There's been a lot of bad publicity between Mattel and Jazzwares on that. So I understand why they're trying to do it. This figure, I think, does look a little bit better outside of the package. He does got that kind of squinty face going on that is a little strange. Uh, I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of this head sculpt. They seem to get the skin tones a little bit better on this one some, than some of the prior ones, at least. So we can say we do like that. Uh, but it is Nick Jackson. Once again, you got the elbows very weak at the elbow, but they are double-jointed, uh, just like the knees. But not a terrible figure. He's got the purple headband. There's, this is a lot to like here. Let's compare it to this one from Series 3. I think I'm going to have to give Series 3 the Duke on this one, though. I like this head sculpt. I like the hair better. I like the soft goods kind of uh, boot flare going on. It just gives it a little bit more of a more pizzazz. We're going to call it pizzazz. That's what it's got going on there. Uh, I don't know. I could see... <laughs> it's got kind of a cheesy smile on this. I don't know if they've got Nick Jackson or Matt Jackson, for that matter, uh, down quite yet. Uh, the hair colors are different. A lot blonder here. A little darker on this one. I don't know. I don't know. This one... Boy, I tell you what, too, now that I look at it more, this is a much better painted head sculpt. Uh, this kind of has that glossy, almost FTC look, if you're familiar with the FTC Figures Toy Company. It's got a little of that high-end gloss going on here, where this looks more realistic in the face. So we're seeing a little bit of a step back uh, in those two, if, uh, if I have to be honest here, and I have to be. Uh, there's a little step back, and I think some of the paint quality on these. And I know times are tough, trying to save a dollar, everything's more expensive. So I hope they don't go backwards on some of these Jazzwares figures, uh, trying to cut costs and savings and stuff. I don't believe we've heard of a price increase on AEW figures quite yet. Uh, Mattel, of course, has taken price increases. Hasbro has taken a lot of price increases. Jazzwares have not. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where that's going to go. If they feel they're too new still to be able to take that price increase, that could be the stakes there or they might be saying hey we're gonna we're gonna lay low for about six months on price increases if we can be cheaper than competition we'll get more sales more trial stuff like that so there could be some of that going on but it does worry me a little bit in these head paint applications and we'll turn our attention to matt jackson now well we think that same thing going on there and the packaging of course is the exact same he's got the glamour shot up there on the side and rival logo you got him in the package that kind of yellowish orange background classic superstars inspired packaging at the top uh, a little bit of that uh, plastic deformity up here. I don't know if it's just bad plastic, if I just got unlucky or whatever. Good thing I'm opening this, uh, so it doesn't really matter too much. Got him on the side. He is number 56. His brother 57, so 56 right there. Series 7. AW. On the back, you got the cross sell, of course. You got a glamour shot of in-ring action. And then we got the date being 11-7-2020, of course, full, ge full gear. So there it is. Let's pull Matt Jackson out of the package. Let's see what's doing with him. There's going to be a lot of similarities, I, I'm guessing. Holy cow, what are we doing? See you later. Making a mess everywhere. Plastic prison, Matt Jackson. There he is, looking only like a Matt Jackson could look if he was at the table being unboxed right now. Pull him out. There's that grease to the plastic going on here, so that's interesting. A little... What are we doing? What are we doing? There it is. Pull it out. See you later off to the side. Get his little plastic shawl off. There it is. Let me put this back on. <laughs> Just falling apart on me here. So a lot like uh, his brother, of course. I think it's the exact same jacket. It probably should be. It's identical. So we're getting reused. We're saving money here. We got the jackets that are the exact same. So that's a way, making the most out of your molds. I don't hate that because they are a tag team. They are brothers. They did wear the same thing. That makes a lot of sense. So it's getting the most out of your molds, saving money to put towards something else in the line. You guys know how all that works. Uh, Bucks, Young Bucks. Is the bottom half the exact same too? Pretty darn close. I think it is. 
I mean, I think you could basically swap the bottom two halves and they're the exact same. So you're getting just a ton of reuse here. Just a ton of reuse. I, I don't get too pained about it, though, because they are a tag team. They are very similar stocks. They do wear the same outfits, all that kind of fun stuff. So it, it makes sense um, to do that, I guess. So there you go. So let's get this off, this jacket off, see what's going on. Man, have I mentioned I hate taking these Polly Pocket jackets off? So much work, so hard to do. Just always fighting you. Always feeling like you're going to break something. Come on, geez, there it goes. You get that one arm off, and then you're just home free from there. Kind of. Gosh, come on, what are we doing? What are we doing, Polly Pocket? There it is. He's got his bags on his arm. Got to have those bags on the arm. Gosh, they're so annoying. I just feel it's overkill, but I mean, they must know something. They must know these are going to bleed all over the plastic. I don't know why they would spend the money on here for a just-in-case. So it must be the case that, hey, they are going to stain. But then it goes to, okay, I'm a collector and I have this on display. Is this going to stain over time for me too? Uh, should I be leaving these plastics on forever? I, I can't even get this plastic off. What are we doing here? Got scissors just in case. Maybe that'll help. The saran wrap is on there tight. It's on there tight. It's in those double jointed elbows, and I'm I'm worried because we know how uh, how fragile the elbows are on these figures. What is going on? We are stuck deep in here. We're in deep, guys. We shouldn't have to work this hard to get this off. What is going on? It's like all bunched up, but like stuck in the joint, and then it's got that plasty stickiness to it, which is never good. Nobody likes that. There it is. Got that off. Now we can get the chest off. It's just unbelievable how much they got going on here. Just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Come on. I don't like this. I don't like this. I shouldn't have to work this hard to unbox a figure. I'm sorry. I shouldn't. <laughs> it's just the way it goes. Once again, no fist with uh, Matt Jackson, just like his brother. So no fists in this entire line. I, I just boggles my mind on that one as well. So I don't know what's going on there. But there he is. He's out of the package. Now, does he have the exact same body as his brother? It's pretty close. It's pretty close. This is the exact same figure with different heads. I mean, it really feels that way. It really does feel that way. And he's got the screaming head scan on this one. Yeah, getting the most out of your molds to the T here. This is the definition of getting the most out of your molds. Let's pull out uh, the other Matt Jackson. Which head sculpt is better? Once again, much like his brother, they don't feel like they've gotten him either way. He's got more of a full beard on this one. Uh, it almost looks like two totally different people. This, these head sculpts here. And I, I don't know if they've quite got the unbucks as a whole yet. I mean, they still got some work to do from the way I sit and from where I sit, which is right here, of course. I don't know. But I think I'm giving the Duke, if I had to choose between these, I'm going to give the Duke to this one. I like the Series 3 a lot better. I just feel like the uh, outfit looks better on this one than the new ones. Just not a lot here. So I, And I do think these are going to peg warm pretty good. We see this set peg warming right now at a lot of stores. Uh, with coming back this fast with this set... I just don't think these are going to move. I just don't know if the Young Bucks are quite to that popularity level that they're going to just constantly, people are going to buy every single one out there. I think there's going to be a lot of people picking and choosing which ones. I already got two sets of Young Bucks. I don't need a third quite yet. That's why I think they should have waited a little bit longer than to put these guys in here. But it does also go back to the COVID times. I know they had trouble getting people's head scans and stuff, so they had to reuse a lot of the talent of the Cody Rhodeses, uh, the MJFs, the Jerichos, and, of course, the Young Bucks. So that goes into the whole story as a whole. So it makes a little sense there. But i got to say, I'm a little underwhelmed by uh, this set as well. Uh, it's just, I don't know. But as we know, Jazzwares is pumping out a lot of product between the Unrivaled, the Unmatched, the store exclusives from Ringside, Amazon, uh, and who knows what else in 2022. So we're going to get a lot of product. It truly is history repeating itself from the old Jacks, Ruthless Aggression, Adrenaline, Ring Rage, go on and on days. And if you guys remember then, there was a lot of good stuff and there was a lot of bad stuff and middle of the road stuff. And now we're starting to see that as time has progressed in this Unrivaled line, where everybody was so gung-ho at the beginning. They were rare, they were hard to find, Walmart only and Ringside. Now they're available at GameStop, Amazon, Targets, Walmarts, uh, everywhere they're available. You can find them on eBay fairly easy. Uh, it's an interesting road they're paving here with these unrivaled and unmatched figures. 
So we'll see where it goes. And I think uh, some of the new shiny toyness is wearing off. And now some of the more heavy critiques are coming, including for me. I'm being a little bit more critical than ever on these. Uh, a lot of reuse here. Uh, missing the fist. That's my biggest gripe uh, outside of the elbow joints being way too weak on these figures. I just think there's uh, room for improvement. Constant learnings, constant improvements. Uh, and, you know, I've been saying it for I don't know how many series now about this. And I hope maybe some of the future series change that because it is truly ridiculous. We don't have a fist with any of these figures. If kids are playing with these or or even grown adults want to put them up on display or figure photography, you need some fists somewhere along the way. Uh, and we're not getting them with any of them here. So very, very interesting. Uh, I'd be interested to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments, as you guys always know. So there it is, Series 7, The Young Bucks. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this AEW Unrivaled Series 7 unboxing review. Please leave your comments down below with your thoughts. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on social media at SirPaul64 on Twitter. The underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on Instagram. And of course, ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. And stay tuned for the end of the week when we rank this entire set from my favorite to my least favorite.